Hi, I'm Amanda Jensen. I was just interviewed by Keith Andrew with the Keith Andrew Network, and I think he's doing amazing work. For people who want to know what is the Keith Andrew Network, the whole point of my talk show is to show you that even with having a word of disability, I can sell them out to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities and never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be to prove them and stem out to something. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith Andrew. Don't trust that dial. This is the Keith Andrew Network available on all social medias, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn. If you have social media, make sure to like and subscribe to the Keith Angie Network so you are notified when brand new episodes are available. This is episode 1062. That is right, 1062 episodes. I'm here with uh, the beautiful and talented Amanda. We did a double... Uh, tag team interview last time but today we're going to do a one-on-one -on -one interview so it's a real honor and privilege having you with us oh yeah thank you so much i'm happy to be here yeah the honor's all mine now for people who want to know the key fancy network is about freedom of speech self-expression some episodes are pg some are pt 13 but the one thing i like is give the guest the freedom to say what they want and talk about anything you want. This is your time. So the first question I want to ask you is tell our audience a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm originally from Minnesota, one of the coldest places in the country. Um, I used to do a lot of research on the weather and literally the only place colder in the U.S. is North Dakota. So for 28 years of my life, I lived in the winter <laughs> Me and my husband moved down here to Florida about eight years ago. I am married. I have two cats. I'm a crazy cat lady. Um, we owned a boat for a long time. We ended up selling it, but I do love anything to do with the ocean and the salt life and traveling. Um, I'm a licensed psychologist too, so I'm actually a doctor and I do that part time. But I realized my real passion was everything to do with the performing arts. And I also love modeling. And I've been doing that for almost a year and a half now. Very part-time. I would like it to be more full-time. Oh, absolutely. It's funny you should mention psychology. If I do want to talk to you about off the air, I do have something like an idea right to run past you. But going sure. back to the very beginning, what motivated you to start being an actress and be a psychologist as well. Yeah, it's a great question. Well, I'll start with psychology because I, I did that first. Um, and I, I'm interested in a lot of different things. And I've done a lot of careers throughout my life. And to be honest, I think my personality is kind of excitement seeking. And I like change. And I'm very curious. And Psychology, even though it's a science, it's also an art. It's it's actually, I, I got a degree in Bachelor of Arts. So it is very um, creative and, and abstract, even though it, there's also a science to it. But I fell in love with my first psychology course in high school. It was so interesting, and there's always so much to learn. Um, and I've been doing it now for about, um, let's see, over well over 10 years. No, it's been like almost 20 years now. It's crazy. Um, it's crazy like how old I don't feel, but how old I actually am. <laughs> um, but yeah, I fell in love with it because it is very interesting and there's just never ending amounts of information to learn and people are so, you know, complex with so many problems. So for that reason, it does keep me interested because it's so complex and there's always more to learn. Um, I do get burned out with like the negative content, you know, people's negative issues they're dealing with and just trying to solve the world's problems all the time. It kind of burns me out. And so I think eventually I realized I want to do something more fun and I want to do something more creative and expressive. 
and something that's more in line with my true nature. And um, I really believe God led me to my dream of acting, which I started acting classes when I was young. I was like a teenager. Me and my sister took a bunch of classes. And for some reason, I stopped. I think just life and family problems kind of got in the way. But I did take acting classes as a teenager, and I practiced for a bunch of commercials. And then, as I said, life got in the way, and for whatever reason, I just didn't pursue it. Um, but in my mid-30s, I feel like all of a sudden, God reminded me of my dream, and I started with modeling. And someone invited me to a photo shoot um, from my social media. They were like, oh, I think you'd be great at modeling. Do you want to come and do a photo shoot with us? It was a place down in Parkland, Florida, where they help models get started with um comp cards that's the modeling resume term comp card and so i did a full photo photo shoot there and i just loved it and i had so much fun and um they helped me get started with what to do they talked about you know getting agencies and doing portfolio photo shoots and i just kind of fell in love with it and once i was doing modeling i realized my real love was acting and i kind of remembered being a child and me and my sister would always put on plays and usually I was the star and my sister was the director. So she would come up with these crazy ideas and I would just, I would be happy to do them, whatever, whatever I could do to get in front of the camera and we would film them and we would force our family to watch them. <laughs> so that's how it all started. Now the next one I want to ask you is what is the biggest change you want to make in your acting career? That's a really good question. The biggest change. Well, I would say, you know, I would say I want to get more focused on the types of roles and the types of films and television that I'm interested in <clears throat> um, versus just kind of taking whatever comes. Um at, you know, I'm I'm still a very new actress. I only have 15 credits on my IMDb. And mostly I've done, you know, commercial work. And I've done a couple of industrial projects. I've done a lot of modeling. And, you know, I was on the Home Shopping Network, which kind of combines modeling with TV. Um, so I've done a lot of great stuff. But I don't feel like I've been deliberate in focusing on what I really want. And what I really want is to do um, Christmas films, like Hallmark movies, um, Christian films. Um, I'm also interested in rom-coms and even horror and psychological thriller films. And I also want to do more commercial work that pays. Of course, we all want to get paid, right? So, um, but I've been really busy with my regular job. I'm doing 10 hours a week of acting classes at Truthful Acting Studios. That's in Orlando and it's um, Meisner based training. And I'm also trying to like do all these other things. So I just feel so scattered and overwhelmed. Like I just wrote my first book and got that published and I'm trying to make a course. Um, I'm sure you know what that's like, given that you work a regular job and you're doing this. You just, you start to feel overwhelmed and like lack focus. You know, that's how I've been feeling. No, you're absolutely right. That's the funny of that. I'm actually taking a break from that. So I'm going to focus on this. But no, I've mm -hmm. been, I say to people, I've been doing this for 10 and a half years, but I'm still green. You know, I st still need to figure out what that means. But <laughs> whatever sounds good. I'm still green. You know, I'm, I taught myself this, you know, everyone says, because mm -hmm. I fall under the spectrum of being retarded, you know, I can't read, I can't do this. But for 10 and a half oh. years, look at what I was able to create for myself. Because, yeah, it's amazing. Of course, you know, there are people who like that, not actually, but verbally hit me over the head, say, well, if you've been doing this for a long time, you should have turned it into something. I would rather have it take a long time than being a one hit wonder. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I'm surprised that you can't read. I mean, it's amazing what you've been able to do given well, your disability, like truly really very inspiring. 
I can read a little bit, but if you give me a script, then I am I'm kind of it's, sorry, that's distraction. <laughs> this headset's really annoying. Um uh, my thing is <laughs> if you give me like short words, like for the next question I'm gonna ask you is what are some of the highlights of your career? If it's something short and brief, I can read that. But if you say, oh. hey, go read a book or hey, go we'll read a script, it's going to be overwhelming for me. But if oh. you take the okay. time to go over it with me, that's because I learn at a slower pace and they classify that as in being retarded. Okay. Makes sense. That makes sense. Yes. Um, I I'm still surprised by it though, given all that you do on social media and just interviewing people. Um, so theoretically, if you wanted to be an actor, you could do it. You just would need to maybe more time to prepare. Yes. <laughs> and take it step makes by sense. step. Yeah, well, you, you actually bring up the next point that I want to ask you is how comfortable are you teasing other people everything that you learn? Like, what are some of the, well, it's kind of a two parter. Let me rephrase that. What are the do's and don'ts of being an actress that you learn that you want to tease other people mm -hmm. not to do? That's a good question. Um, at some point, I would love to do coaching or teaching acting. I'm so not at that point yet. Um, but I will be Meisner, fully Meisner trained by January, which is really, really great. Like I will have done almost a year of intensive acting training. So at that point in January, I would feel comfortable like tutoring people or coaching people. Um, and I would love to add that to my mixture of activities at some point. Um, and actually one casting group did ask me if I would offer coaching. So yes, I want to do that. Um, as far as actor do's and don'ts, I, I'm probably too green to know everything, but I do have some things that I know that actors, new actors should watch out for. Um, do's, I would say, um, you know, definitely do training at some point, like, if you want to just jump in and do the work, that's great. And that's what I did. But you should be doing some sort of training concurrently because nobody likes to watch a bad actor on screen, right? And I mean, everybody learns differently. So I understand that a lot of people want to just go out there and get on set. But I've learned a lot in my acting classes. And I just think that you set your up, yourself up for success and in delivering a better performance and ultimately a better reputation if you do the training too. Um, I would say also, like, be careful about what you say yes to because that can easily become your brand and your reputation and the kinds of roles that you can get stuck in. So just be really mindful about the things you say yes to, because I've heard of horror stories, luckily not with me yet, knock on wood, but I've heard of horror stories where an actress would do, for example, like a full on nude scene or something really overly sexual. And then, you know, she has this bad reputation and can't do other types of roles or films that she may want to do. Um, and the same could be true for a guy as well, I suppose. But just make sure that, you know, you're thinking about what kind of brand and reputation you want to create, like long term. That doesn't mean you shouldn't work on a variety of projects. It just means, you know, just be aware. Um, and some some agencies and um, producers are very picky about not being on films that are like really bad quality. Um, again, it's just all about image in this career, unfortunately. So that is something we need to, to manage is our image, you know, and what we're a part of. Um, what else? Be aware of scams. There's a lot of scams in the acting and the modeling industry, you know, especially on certain casting websites. And you just need to be really diligent about like what you're signing up for, what you say yes to. Um, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. 
Like if you're super new and you get an email that there's this like $5,000 job for like a one day shoot and you can't find anything about the company on Google, you know, make sure that you're doing your research, asking around and searching on the internet to make sure something is legitimate. That's another huge thing to watch out for. Um, also, self tapes are a big thing now. And um, they require a lot of work. And like, I would say, like, take a self tape class, or do a lot of um, like individual study and get the right equipment to make sure your self tapes are good. Because it's a big thing, you know, you need the right lighting, you need the right sound. You have to follow directions on exactly what they're, the casting is asking for. And it's a lot of work. But if you send in a bad self tape over and over, you know, you're, you're not going to get booked. So. Sure, I agree. So that's it. You bring up a good point about scams. A lot of people say you should, a lot of people say you shouldn't. My brother says you should never pay someone to represent you. Now, I know that's different from what I'm doing from what you're doing, but we're both in the entertainment world. Do you yeah. pay someone to represent you or you don't pay them? Um, I do not pay anyone and, and I am in agreement with your brother. I refuse to pay anyone to represent me. The only thing I would maybe pay for is like if they had special photography they wanted to do for me or maybe possibly like if if they have their own website and like a website fee, a small fee, I would maybe do that. But as of as of yet, I have yet to pay for anyone, uh, pay anyone. And, and I don't really want to because I just don't really think that's right. And that's what I've heard. We shouldn't be paying for representation. There's plenty of agencies that will represent you for free and they'll take their 10 to 20 percent. And that's reasonable. You know, they get their commission. And then there are free casting websites also, like Backstage. I've gotten a few jobs from there. Um, you pay for those. And then, of course, Casting Networks and Actors Access. I think for Actors Access, you do need an agency to submit through there. I haven't booked anything from there yet. But also you can get a lot of work from social media. So, and I know a lot of actors start out that way. They just they just do a lot of like local independent work and just build up their resume and their skills and then eventually get more representation. So I know people disagree about that, but that's what I think. I don't think it's right to pay for representation. And I don't think it's right to pay for... <clears throat> experiences either like in the modeling industry there's a lot of events that you can just pay to be a part of and I just don't think that's right it's like I'm the talent you know I might do something unpaid like a lot of fashion shows are unpaid and you just go and model and you know you get pictures and it's fun but I'm not gonna pay to work that to me that's just ridiculous like I am I'm too busy for that my time is too valuable I won't do it. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. Now, the other two questions I want to ask you is what is your claim to fame? And was there any actors or actresses that you admired that gave you any words of wisdom? Um, well, I don't think I have a claim to fame yet. <laughs> I'm still waiting for it because <laughs> I've only been acting for about a year. I started modeling about a year and a half ago. So I did modeling for a while and then I got into commercials and, um, you know, a couple of television things. And I've only been acting for about a year. Um, some of the things that I'm proud of though, is being on home shopping network as a model a few times. And they've asked me to come back and I want to go back so badly, but I live over two hours away from there. And I also work a regular job, so I haven't been able to go back there. But that was one of the most fun experiences I've had is being on the Home Shopping Network. Um, I did an international infomercial for athletic wear. I am big into fitness and I love women's athletic wear. So I did that and that was really fun. Um, I just had my biggest role yet in a film. It was called Guard My Heart. The director was Kareem Everson. 
And um, I really enjoyed it. I played an art director and I got to work closely with some other actresses. And I'm told that they might be getting it in with Tyler Perry Studios or something. It could be kind of a big thing, even though technically it's a short film. I think it's like 45 minutes. But I'm told that it could be a bigger thing. So that was really fun. And I'm booked for a couple of other projects in the spring that I'm really excited for. They're like bigger budget projects, you know, things that might be a bigger deal. One of them is a film called Suspended Reality. And there's some big stars on that one. And then another one is a TV series called Vice Squad, which will be taken place, uh, filmed in New York. And I'm playing a doctor role on that one. So I'm really excited about those. And then I think you had another question there. Um, did anyone give me advice? Yes. Did anyone give me advice? Um, I've gotten a lot of good advice from Truthful Acting Studios. I would highly recommend them. Um, and one of the teachers said that, you know, if you're doing something you hate every day, basically you should leave because you're choosing to be there. And our time is very valuable. And I'm still wrestling with that. Like, do I quit my job and go all in on my acting dream, which I would love to do? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm like trying to encourage my husband to make more money so I can do that. <laughs> but yeah, that's the only advice I can think of right now. Now, the next question I want to ask you is what has been your greatest achievements? You know, it's funny you should mention Home Shopping Network. My mom's upset. Well, was obsessed. Was watching uh, QBC and Home Shopping Network. Really? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I would say I would say the Home Shopping Network was probably one of my bigger modeling achievements. Um, I've also done modeling for Echelon Fitness for their fitness um, products, and that was really fun. Um, I made top 10 in a global modeling competition, which was also a TV pilot. That was pretty cool. Got to walk the runway. Um, and I feel like I'm just starting to get bigger roles for acting. So, you know, I think a lot of my bigger achievements are still out in front of me. I'm working on a role right now where I'm playing the doctor for a film called Divine Design 2. And that's a bigger role as well. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I've enjoyed doing commercials and I'm thankful for the commercials I've been able to do. Um, and I really would like more commercials. Um, so that's that's kind of a goal that I still have is to figure out how to get booked more often <laughs> for commercials. Actually, you bring up a good point. Actually, a great subject I want to add to you. Out of all the commercials that you have done over the years, or over the past year, well, whatever the correct term is, what were some of your yeah. favorite commercials that you have done? Well, um, I've only done like six or seven, so I haven't done that many. But I would say I really enjoyed a Jimmy Dean holiday commercial, which involved singing singing carols. That was really fun. I got to do that with some other women. And then I, I really enjoyed my first commercial, which was an international infomercial for the women's athletic wear. That was really fun. I, I made some, you know, friends that I stayed connected with through that one. And then one that I also really enjoyed was a Visit Orlando commercial. And I, again, I always try to connect with people when I'm on set. And that's the most fun part, I think. But the Visit Orlando commercial was really fun. We did lots of different B-roll and even some like modeling walks in the commercial. And it was just a lot of fun. Do you have any ideas that you want to do for your own commercial? You know, for me, I remember two commercials that stand out. It's like one was a human tower by I think it was Adidas or the guys just standing there and having one just piles up. And at the end, like, go buy Adidas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the other one, it was like a headache. I think it was a human pyramid in it. 
but it was something spectacular. You know, Dave, you always have to have something in there that people remember from the Camaso, like from the Budweiser, it's a free fogs. But our the Budweiser Super Bowl Camaso, where they had to build a human bridge and it's like, oh, the bridge is out. So people build a bridge and the truck goes um, driving by. Okay, that's yeah. kind of like, how can people support a truck? <laughs> But, you know, there's certain <laughs> things like that. It's kind of like, yes, you want to have fun. You want to make it memorable. But if mm-hmm. you were in charge or given ideas for certain commercials for the industry, what would be some of your ideas passing the show over to you? Wow, that's a tough question. You're really putting me on the spot there. Um, that's kind of like, like an advertising question. You know, I'm obsessed with cats. So I think if I was in charge, I would have cats in like every commercial. Like I'm one of those people that loves to watch cat videos. And I just think cats can always bring a smile to most people's face. Um, I think last I seen cats are even more popular than dogs in the U S I'm sure lots of people would disagree, but I would put cats in the commercials and make it funny and cute. Um, Also, I love like the holiday seasons. So I would really overdo holiday stuff like Halloween and Christmas in particular. But that's just a couple ideas that I that come to mind. Absolutely. Now, stay tuned for after the show. We're going to do a special sit down. We'll be in. One day again, I get tongue tied. One day. We're going to do the special sit down with the Key Fancy Network that's only available on TikTok and Instagram. We do pretty much the reason I do the sit down is they tell you you have to post something every day on social media. So instead of copy and pasting the same thing over and over, why not extend the Key Fancy Network and do a special show? Stay tuned. But wrapping up, how can or, I can't speak? Handle the show disabilities, right? How can our fans yeah. and listeners follow you on social media? Um, yeah, they can follow me. I would say the best place is on Instagram. Um, it's Amanda Jensen, J-E-N-S-E-N dot actress. Um, I'm also on TikTok and Facebook, but if you go to my Instagram, you can see my link tree and find all my other social media there. No, absolutely. Now, stay tuned for off the air, but wrapping up, it was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest. I'm looking forward to part two. For anyone who's watching this on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, make sure if you're watching, you're guaranteed and obligated. Well, I guarantee you're going to enjoy it, but you are obligated to leave a comment because there's no point in watching if you're not going to read feedback. When you read feedback, Amanda and me will be interacting with every single comment on that page. So wrapping up, it was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest, and I'm looking forward to part two down the road. Until we meet again, catch you later. Thank you, and have a good night.